The next thing we're going to explore is unit rates. Now, we've already seen an example of one that is a unit rate, and that's 55 miles per hour. A unit rate is defined as per single unit in the denominator. So if I have 55 miles per one hour, well, just like we treated this uh, as a variable before or a, a multiple, well, not having a coefficient down here, we assume it's 1. That's a unit rate, 55 miles for every one hour or 55 miles per hour. What if we wanted to write 275 miles in 11 hours? Maybe we traveled 275 miles in 11 hours, and we want to know what was our average rate. Well, one thing we could do to get this to be a single unit, if we write 275 miles, and I'm just going to abbreviate, per 11 hours, well, one way we can do is we can reduce this or actually do the division. Let's do the division here. 275 divided by 11. 11 goes into 27 twice, which would be 22. If I find that difference, I get 5. Bring down the next digit. 11 goes into 55 five times with no remainder. So 25 is my unit rate, 25 miles per hour. And I'm going to write that as 25 miles per hour. The nice thing about unit rates is we can write their unit separately from the coefficient. Because this denominator is 1, and anything divided by 1 is still that number, 25 miles per hour. All right, here's an example of another uh, unit rate that we see on a daily basis, especially if we're driving anywhere. On the way here today, I seen that gas was 3.799 per gallon. $3.79 and 9 tenths, if we're talking about cents, per gallon of gas. That's a unit rate that we deal with all the time. So we should be somewhat familiar with them. It's just that our denominator, $3799 per one gallon. And we can write it that way as a unit rate. All right, what if we want to find a unit price? Now, a lot of times when we go to the grocery store, we can buy things in bulk, and we get a better deal. Well, maybe we go to the store, and there's a sale that says three apples cost 87 cents. Well, you want to know what the unit price is. And that means, how much are you going to pay per apple? And just by making that statement, it tells me I want a unit rate of dollars over apples, but only one apple. So this is my question. How much money per apple? Well, if I can see what this ratio is, ratios are just division. I want to divide this by that. Now recall, in the first, uh, one of the first examples we did, we don't want to have a decimal. So I'm going to move this decimal not one spot, but two this time. One, two, and put it over there so I'd have 87. But what I do to this number, I have to do to this one. So if I imagine a, a decimal here, I've got to move it one, two spots, and then I'd have two placeholders. So, now, this looks like a big intimidating fraction. But instead of doing the division like we did before, let's use prime factorization. I know that this is 3 times 100. And 87, well, I know that's divisible by 3. 3 goes into 8 twice with a remainder of 2. 3 goes into 27 9 times. And let's reduce that 3 and that 3. They simplify to 1. And now this is 29 one hundredths. 29 one hundredths, well, it's not a unit rate yet, but it's a factor of 100. Just like we move this by a factor of 100, 10 and 10, 10 times 10 is 100, I can move it back now by dividing by 100. Well, if I divide this by 100, I get 0 0.29. If I divide 100 by 100, it becomes 1. So I have 0.29 over 1. That's my unit rate. That's what I was going for. So now we have to put the units back in. It was dollars per apple. So 0.29 dollars, or cents, if you want to say 29 cents, per apple. 
All right. And introducing decimals here is a little tricky because it's not until the very next section that we're going to introduce the more intricate details of working with decimals. All right, let's look at proportions. Now, proportions are a special type of ratio. It is where we set one ratio equal to another ratio. Here's an example we've seen several times. We have 1 half equals 2 fourths. We know this is true. 1 half is 2 fourths because 2 fourths would reduce to 1 half. But we read it as 1 is to 2 as 2 is to 4. So by using that translation, try to convert this to a proportion where we have a fraction equal to another fraction. That is our equal ratios definition of a proportion. So try this one on your own. Two ice cubes is to five beverages as four ice cubes is to 10 beverages. Now, when we get answers like that, sometimes we want to check our work. We can do that very simply by using something called the cross product. Let's look at this example right here. I have 2 fifths divided by 2 sevenths. And if we recall in previous sections, we talked about complex fractions. And we could simplify this to see if it's a true statement. And then we could simplify this and compare them and say, are they a true statement? But what's an easier, more efficient tool, just like you could use there, is to use cross product. It says, take the denominator and multiply it by the numerator of the other side. Take the denominator on the one side and multiply it times the numerator of the other. So let me just write these out. I'm taking 2 sevenths times 1 tenth. And I'm taking 1 third times 2 fifths. And now I'm just going to multiply them out and see if they're true. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 5 is 15. And let me get this out of the way here. 2 times 1 is 2. 7 times 10 is 70. In this example, using the cross product, 2 fifteenths is not the same as 2 seventieths. This is not a true proportion. So it told me, without having to do any simplification of this side or simplification of that side, I just did cross product. And I could see that that's not true. Well, this cross product is also a tool we can use when working with proportions to solve a variable. In this example, we have 8 over 1 third, a complex fraction, equal to 24 over x, where we have a variable. So let's use the cross product to solve for x, and we'll see what happens. 1 third times 24, and I'll use parentheses here. And then I have x times 8, which is just 8x. Now, if I simplify this, 1 third times 24, that's the same as 24 over 1. 3 goes into 24 eight times. So that reduces to 8. So if you see what we have, 8x equals 8, I can now solve this for x. I can find that variable, and I use that tool of a cross product. So 8x equals 8. I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 8, which is 1 8. 1 8 simplifies what I do to one side. I do to the other, simplifies. 1x equals 1 times 1, which is just 1. x equals 1. And then we can always check our work. Does 8 divided by 1 third equal 24 over 1, which is just 24? Multiply by the reciprocal, if we recall how to work with complex fractions. 3 times 8 is, in fact, 24. This is a true statement. Now, for solving equations using cross product, go ahead and try to solve this one. It's good review from what you've learned before and how to work with proportions, a fraction equal to a fraction. Now, this has been a lot of information, and it's going to take practice to get to where you need to be. Keep practicing. Do your homework. Thank you for watching.